frustrated by the speed of Reason 12, taking forever to do anything, wondering why things are so slow. Well, I've got a miracle cure for you today. In this video, I'm going to show you several things you can do to hopefully speed up performance for you in Reason 12. These things may be the source of your performance woes. I will say for me, I have not had any performance issues in Reason 12, and on my computer, it's running faster than ever, but I have read that a lot of people are having issues and some have even rolled back to Reason 11. So be sure to turn the like button up to 11 for this video. And stay tuned for the end, because that's where I've got one of my best tips to boost performance. I will say I am not technical support for Reason. If I do not have the answer, please do not at me. I am not. I'm just trying to share some general advice. If that said, if you have some tips to boost performance, please leave them in the comments below, and I'm happy to share them. I am not here to troubleshoot your specific performance thing, so please do not at me on that. With Reason 12, they upgraded the graphics to be fully HD compatible, and I think this is probably what's gonna be causing people a lot of trouble. So, first of all, the thing you might wanna do, consider before anything else, is closing all background programs. So that Reason is the only thing running on your computer. That will definitely boost performance. Often these days, like Internet Explorer, not Internet Explorer, Chrome, or Safari or any of those programs can take just a ton of your computer processing power, especially even just running something like Gmail. Uh, so close everything out in the background if you're having issues. Second, what you're going to want to do is open Reason and make sure that do is make sure you've got enough free hard drive space because this can often slow down a system just generally. So clean out all your trash and garbage and all of that. Once you've got Reason open, I think we need to distinguish between two different types of issues with Reason 12. First of all, there is a very real lag that everybody will experience the first time they open Reason 12 and they start using new devices in it because Reason has to, I'm not sure if it's rendering these for the first time or caching them for the first time or whatever it is, but basically the first time you open a device in Reason 12, you may experience a lag as it gets rendered. That should disappear after the first time, unless you change the zoom. And then if you change the zoom, it will have to re-render the device for that zoom. But I believe after it's done it once, it will be locked in forever as part of your preferences, and this will no longer be an issue. This will also apply when you tab over. So the first time you tab over may be slower, and then it'll speed up. One other thing to note before we just get into these is that the DSP meter does, from what I've been hearing, and the CPU load for devices doesn't seem to be fully registering for Reason 12. People are getting some really weird results. Um, so don't necessarily be trusting that right now to figure things out. Also, if you're running Reason 12 and it's working well, I've got a free Combinator patch for you. It's for the Combinator 2, only for Reason 12. There's a link down below to pick it up. It's awesome. It's sort of this far out reverb delay thing that will really make things come to life and do weird, weird, wild stuff. So how do we boost the performance of Reason 12 after you've fixed all this stuff in the background and realize that the first load or two may be slow? Well, we go over to preferences, preferences, and first we can go to general. And you might be able to speed things up ever so slightly by disabling cable animation. This will just give reason one fewer thing to render. Uh, normally, if you tab it over, everything kind of jiggles a little bit. So this will just take that virtual element out on the audio tab right here. One thing you can try is increasing the buffer size. This will definitely improve performance but um, it will introduce some lag. So if you're trying to record something live, a large buffer is gonna mess everything up. Another thing you can do, and this is absolutely where most of your magic is gonna come from, is messing around with these three boxes here under performance. I find they give me radically different results on different computers. You would think something that sounds as cool as hyper-threading audio rendering would really be good. On my computer, it brings everything to a halt. So experiment having it on and off on your computer. Same with multi-core audio rendering and same with render audio using 
card buffer size settings. Test it on your system to see if it works. Um, and I've got one more tip that could really boost things. Uh, so the other thing you can do to really speed up performance and reason is go down here on the bottom right on the um, transport and turn off delay compensation. Basically, delay compensation is really important when you're mixing a song, but not that important when you're recording. Every plugin introduces a little bit of latency. And delay compensation basically s allows everything to lag so that all the plugins, by the time they get to the end of the chain, have the same amount of latency so you don't have phase issues. It's a really important tool for mixing because especially if you do parallel processing, you can get into awful situations without delay compensation. But if you're just recording right now and you're trying to get good ideas on track, it will definitely sit on your computer. So turn that on or turn that off while you're recording, turn it on while you're mixing. And my big bonus tip, and this is not just for a reason, this is really for music production in general, once you're done writing and recording your track, render all the audio, or render all the MIDI, MIDI, render all the MIDI and the audio, and put it into a new project. You've got all your now all your effects, all your instruments. They've all all been baked into your audio file, and your computer has a lot less work to do. And then you just get to focus on being a mixer, which is why I've got that free mi Reason mixing template, which presumes you've already loaded in the audio, and so. Just go check out my website for the reason templates under free stuff. I really hope this was helpful. If you've got any tips for how to boost performance and reason that I didn't cover here, please share them below. I also wanna share just a few more general things you can do to boost performance and reason. One would be to really make sure that your computer is, you know, well-maintained. There's no viruses on it. Just, you know, whatever your antivirus software is, that could be causing a lag. Also, that both Reason, I mean, both Windows and Mac have various options to like do fancier toolbars and animated this and animated that. If performance is really an issue, you can consider going into your preferences and figuring out how to turn all that stuff off, whether, you know, an icon will bounce or whatever it might do in the most recent version of your operating system. Go look how to minimize all of those visual effects because those can certainly be taking up some precious background resources. It sounds to me as if maybe they rushed Reason 12 to pre-release based on some of the things I've been hearing. I've never heard of people having to roll back a version of Reason to get usable performance. So that's kind of troubling. Um, if you've had an experience like that, please let me know in the comments before because certainly on Facebook and on Reason Talk, I've seen and Reddit, I've seen people complaining about that. Um, obviously, the people with the biggest problems are going to make the most noise, but I just, I'm trying to, trying to get a general sense of how many people have been affected by this. Like I said, works great on my system, but my system is definitely on the newer end of things.